Welcome everyone to the first masterclass with Dr. Melanie Carminati. I am really excited for this because it's been a little while since we've done any free lectures at Inspira Physical Therapy and Pilates, and the topic for today is dyspareunia. For those who are unfamiliar with dyspareunia, dyspareunia by definition is is pain with intercourse. If you look at the link that I'm referencing or the article that I'm referencing, which is from 2022, so it's a fairly recent article, it talks about dyspareunia as being pain that can be experienced before, during, or after intercourse. And there are different ways that we can categorize dyspareunia because there's different times, as I'd already mentioned, in which you can experience dyspareunia, and then there's different descriptions that patients will often give. Dyspareunia, when it's categorized as superficial, is when we talk about pain that is more specific to the vulva or vaginal entrance, whereas Deep dyspareunia, as you might assume, is pain that is experienced during sex when it is into the deeper parts of the pelvis or into that lower pelvis region. For dyspareunia, when a patient comes in to pelvic floor physical therapy and the main complaint is dyspareunia or pain with intercourse, we talk about many different things. We talk first about when it started if the symptoms are primarily happening during, before, what we would say is upon initial penetration, if it is upon an initial penetration, and what other workup has been done for this person. Were they tested for any bacterial infections, UTIs? Is there a history of trauma? Is this postnatal? Was there any tearing if it is postnatal, meaning after they gave birth? And so all of this information helps us understand the big picture. As many of you know, who have been following in spirit physical therapy, we are big advocates for education about endometriosis as well. And endometriosis, characteristically, what is experienced is that if there is a denomyosis, is the, the deep pain with penetration. So all of these things are discussed. We also discuss any urinary symptoms, things of that nature, if there was difficulty with using tampons, and all of that, that kind of just gives us a better picture of what is happening. So there's superficial, and there's deep dyspareunia, and then there's primary and secondary, depending on what the cause is. For our purposes, what I want to talk about today, just to break it down and make it simplified is that superficial primary dyspareunia, which means superficial, meaning those outer or first entry layers of the pelvic floor musculature in that vaginal vulval, vulvar region, and then primary meaning more musculoskeletal in nature. And we're not talking about any other diseases or bacterial infections, UTIs, anything like that. When patients come in and We've narrowed it down to have the first diagnosis that we're considering be superficial primary dyspareunia. We will start first with just talking about all other considerations as to why this might be happening and how long it's been happening. When it comes to pain, any kind of pain, we always want to think of pain from a biopsychosocial model. So there's biological impact creating the painful experience, their psychological impact, and their sociological. All of those things come into play when we're dealing with pain in any part of the body. So when it's sex, there are multiple other layers because it is a very intimate experience. It's an intimate environment, and there's other factors to consider if there's any history of trauma and things like that. So we will talk about that in the beginning of the session. And then when we get into treatment for any pelvic floor assessment, first talking, we're also looking at the lumbar spine and the hips because the hips and the lumbar spine with the anatomy, it is intimate and very close to everything happening in that pelvic abdominal space. And so we are considering that as well. And then when we get to the pelvic floor specific assessment, we're first just observing. Patients will wear a gown. They'll take everything off below the waist. Everything is with consent and just seeing, are there in fact any changes in the tissue? Do we see any difference in color in the vulvar area just to rule out other diagnoses? 
And then again, with permission and with the gloved hand, we're starting first with the external palpation. During the observation portion that I mentioned first, we also will be cueing patients through different muscle activations in the pelvic floor, seeing what the control is like. Can the patient contract in the pelvic floor or do a Kegel? Can the patient relax? And then can they actively bear down or reverse Kegel? All of that is before we even get to the palpation part. Then we get to palpation, feeling around, checking first layer, second layer, third layer musculature with a gloved hand to see if we can identify the muscles. Now with someone who has superficial primary dyspareunia, it is common that sometimes we don't go past the first layer. And this would make sense, right? With characterized superficial primary dyspareunia, because it's those first layer muscles that will be most likely involved that will be causing pain upon penetration. For those individuals, if we are at the first layer and we've identified it, we will not push through and go to the second and third layers. We're going to work with where we are and what we found in that moment. We use different mindfulness cues. We use different breathing techniques paired with manual therapy to help relax those muscles. And something that's unique in our office for patients who have superficial primary dyspareunia that we will use is wind back to car therapy. So wind back to car therapy is a form of radio frequency. And what's really unique and special about wind back to car therapy is we're able to use it internally for our pelvic floor patients because of the bracelet application that they have. This is really a game changer because for those who have superficial primary dyspareunia or painful intercourse, or more commonly pain upon penetration is what you will describe it as. The whole area, when the muscles have been tight for a long period of time, becomes hypersensitive. And just even the lightest bit of touch might be too much and overstimulating. So what we really love about using the wind back to car therapy is it gives a feeling of warmth, which is like a nice relaxation for the patient. The therapist, when we have the bracelet on, we can feel that warmth through our hands too. And that is the radio frequency getting transmitted from our hand, from the wind back to car device into the pelvic floor tissue, into that perineal tissue and into the first layer muscles. With using the wind back to car therapy, it has been another tool that is extremely helpful for patients who have that superficial primary dyspareunia. In terms of understanding the pelvic floor, I just want to pause for a moment. I know that I went right into clinical treatment and explanation. Understanding the pelvic floor and what is the pelvic floor? The pelvic floor is a muscle group. It's a multi-layered muscle group that has multiple different functions. The functions of the pelvic floor include supporting the pelvic abdominal organs. There's sexual function, there's urinary function, uh, we call it sphincteric function, and that just means the different sphincters in that perineal region, the muscles of the pelvic floor are helping to control. The pelvic floor, when we describe it to our patients, we describe it as one of the muscles in your functional deep core. The pelvic floor works and follows the rhythm of your diaphragm. So the diaphragm is the main muscle for inspiration. If you've taken a yoga class or a Pilates class or just had an informed practitioner, they may have guided you through different diaphragm breathing exercises. And all of that is going to help facilitate relaxation in the pelvic floor. So as I mentioned before, when we're doing the manual therapy for our pelvic floor patients who are coming in with superficial primary dyspareunia, using that as a tool to facilitate that pelvic floor relaxation is something that we go for right away. Any of the patients who have come to Inspira know that almost everyone gets some form of diaphragm breathing for homework. That's one thing to remember. Other things to remember is that the pelvic floor as part of that functional core is helping to maintain intra-abdominal pressure. And so we will also be addressing other muscles. We'll be addressing transverse abdominis, lumbar multifidi, and then other musculature in that hip and pelvic wall area. I wanted to just pause and go back to some basics with the pelvic floor and the anatomy. With the treatment including the pelvic floor manual therapy, be it with or without the wind back to car therapy, 
end the exercises and the exercises such as the diaphragm breathing exercises and some other pelvic hip lumbar spine neuromuscular re-education exercises all of those things together will help with the treatment and reducing the pain upon penetration that is characteristic of superficial primary dyspareunia. That is what I wanted to talk about today and just bring more attention to because it is an extremely common diagnosis that patients are coming in for for pelvic floor physical therapy. I want everyone to know that and I want everyone who has been experiencing pain with intercourse to know that they're not alone and to know that there's many people out there who are having similar symptoms and that there is treatment for this. On that same line of thought, as I mentioned before, the biopsychosocial model, there are psychological impacts or psychological connections with what's going on with your mindset and what's going on with your mental health and potential pain that's being experienced in the pelvic floor. So we always talk about with our patients, are they seeing a psychotherapist? Have they had counseling for past traumas, sexual traumas, or are they just really stressed? Is it a really stressful time in their life? Are they having high levels of anxiety? Because all of these emotions manifest in different physiological responses in your body. Most commonly when you're stressed, right, the muscles are going to get tense. We all know this. We've all been stressed and experienced stressful times. And the pelvic floor, a muscle group, it's it's a muscle, multiple muscle layers. So they also can be holding that tension as well. This was the first masterclass. We'll be having these masterclasses the second Friday at 12 of every month. So please join me next time. I look forward to seeing you all next month. There will be a case study that publish in the next month or two where we speak about dyspareunia and we specifically speak about superficial primary dyspareunia and the use of wind back to car therapy in the treatment of that diagnosis. So thank you so much for joining and I will see you all next month for another masterclass. Bye-bye.